Microphone, speaker. Okay. So for we we're back. So for the <clears throat> to start to start throwing some some indexes, some some weather to start to get the mood of of the a, a bit of the the questions that we are asking the topics that we are interested in that are not really specific to this to what we'll be doing in our semester not specific not it doesn't these these examples they don't have a one to one relation to what we are doing but they have to do with how we how we look at the world and what how we find what we find interesting and the ideas and the techniques that are shaping the world that we are living in today so a few just a few indexes to create kind of a, an atmosphere some uh, weather on 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 our topic i want to probably start by sharing what is information for 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 zero more so what is that and what is information we are saying all the time we are living in a fully connected world everybody's talking to each other so what how can we start qualify this So this is a it is a very interesting uh, understanding of what information is. It comes from from Michel Serre, one of our philosophical heroes. We we can say, and in this uh, keynote lecture called "Information and Thinking," he just starts like this. Uh, he says, "Bacteria, fungus, well, sequoia. We don't know any living, any any life of which we cannot say." that it emits, receives, stores, and processes information. Also, there's no crystal, there's no planet, no star, no galaxy that we know that doesn't emit, receives, stores, and process information. There's no village, there's no city, there's no nation, there's no group, there's no individual that do not emit, receive, stores, and process information. So these four rules as he calls as he calls them that are always uh, uh information that it's information is always circulating that we cannot address it that we cannot discuss it that we cannot tap into direct modes of communication uh, between two rocks for example that's a that's a different story but the assumption is that two rocks are there communicating with each other three thousand years of of living organism they were always communicating with each other so this is a very challenging setup because then this means in a way dissolution of we need to start re redefining where something ends where something begins where is the, the the when an idea starts and when an idea ends what are the modes of communication between between these objects how can you start work with scalarities of things? How you start drawing board, uh, uh, boundaries between things? How can one thing uh, uh, be distinguishable from the other? If this is full on, everything is talking to each other all the time. And not only, and this, this definition is not only digital now, it's really our condition, the condition of the planet, the condition of the galaxy, the condition of, of the galaxies of the universe. So, because, information circulates universally within within and between the totality of all existing things we really cannot say that we are so exceptional that we think we are this is kind of these provocative statements at, at the beginning huh? and then i think uh this philosopher he has i don't know 20 50 books and as i see it is he's developing this idea through many in, in all these books is developing all this idea what does it what does it mean what kind of understanding of the world we need in order to make to to make this uh, to affirm this and to live in a world like this so uh, an interesting distinction here between for example uh, uh, data and, and information 
is that information then it's the rare is what is unique what it's special whatever that means so full of noise and the moment that we can start communicating with something then it becomes information i think this idea will be coming back and forth again uh during the the whole year just uh, uh, like what, what's so striking here and uh, where is the edge so like if you if you say that we as humans emit store receive and process information we are very fine with this statement yeah this statement works no problem once you say if the bacteria fungus trees and animals they store receive transmit and process information we are like okay you are going maybe to the edge but they are alive they communicate yeah and then he goes on the top over the top and then he says the mountain the crystal the computer and the table they store and it receive and process information now it's interesting what, what does this mean and this is one of the the core ideas that we want to work with is the idea that objects talk that objects are alive and we will go through this now it sounds a little bit ridiculous but we will show you many examples where we think this is actually actually happening and this what 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 what's so underlyingly beautiful there is that this is on the level of communication and communication is a humanist concept so it's a concept which is related to humanities which is related to literature which is re related to all these things but now it's transposed and goes towards the technical technical domain and this is very interesting how this guy is able to shift and combine the myth with the math yeah and going the history with the science, the humanities with the experiments. So he's constantly saying how they are influencing each other and turning around. And this is kind of a very beautiful and quite unique way of, of playing with these things. Yeah. yeah. And then and then one one super important question here, one of many, I think, is then what's the role of the observer then? So if we look at two rocks talking to each other, or the mountains talking to talking to to, to this grass, then what's what's the role of, of of us when we look at these things? So and then and then for for this, we go directly to to the mathematics of quantum world. I think this is the most abstract and powerful and confusing and and. Uh, what is defining reality today and with the double slit experiment you know this 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 thing it's it's uh, here is a is a is a i will show the video but but what i think is in, in this con in this constellation is what then what's the role of us looking at things and making marks and making relation between these two things that are communicating they are talking between them and they are talking to us and just just to add one, one more thing and here is where the classical science gets challenged yeah because the premise of classical science in an analytical way is that the observer is independent from the experiment so it's the whole thing is based that you can design an experiment and if i do it here it's going to have exactly the same result if we do it do it in the south of chile yeah? or if we go to the moon and we do it again it's going to be the same because it's not about me it's about the experiment but then this happens yeah? but then it's get and, and then this has been successful for 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 mm -hmm. hundreds of for many years hundreds of years but then now we are becoming with this kind of with this kind of mathematics with this kind of of of, of events that we observe then this gets a little bit tricky look at this uh dr quantum now now let's go quantum. let's go quantum An electron is a tiny, tiny bit of matter, like a tiny marble. Let's fire a stream through one slit. It behaves just like the marble, a single band. So, if we shoot these tiny bits through two slits, we should get, like the marbles, two bands. What? An interference pattern. We fired electrons, tiny bits of matter, through. But we get a pattern like waves, not like little marbles. How? How 
look at pieces of matter create an interference pattern like a wave. It doesn't make sense. But physicists are clever. They thought, maybe those little balls are bouncing off each other and creating that pattern. So they decide to shoot electrons through one at a time. There is no way they could interfere with each other. But after an hour of this, the same interference pattern is seen to emerge. The conclusion is inescapable. The single electron leaves as a particle, becomes a wave of potentials, goes through both slits, and interferes with itself to hit the wall like a particle. But mathematically, it's even stranger. It goes through both slits, and it goes through neither. And it goes through just one, and it goes through just the other. All of these possibilities are in superposition with each other. Physicists were completely baffled by this. So they decided to peek and see which slit it actually goes through. They put a measuring device by one slit to see which one it went through and let it fly. <laughs> but the quantum world is far more mysterious than they could have imagined. When they observed, the electron went back to behaving like a little marble. It produced a pattern of two bands, not an interference pattern of many. The very act of measuring or observing which slit it went through meant it only went through one, not both. The electron decided to act differently, as though it was aware it was being watched. Interesting, huh? So we are looking at something beyond us, something that, that it's happening in front of us. And by only act of watching the thing, it has a, the, the, by the only act of watching, this makes us part of the thing. So this is, this is a little bit uh, striking, huh? So if no one is watching, so what's happening over here watching? Somebody is watching what happens over there is watching. So, and I think this is very, this is very uh, relevant because then how can we start measure things in a world that, in, in a world that is full of, of observations, full of things that are happening? So uh, the question of, of, of measurement here is, is, is super important. And another physicist that is really uh, uh, tackling this question, question Feynman. So he's, uh, I think he died recently, uh, a few de decades ago. And he's saying, the only thing that I can do is to measure with extreme precision the probability of an event to occur. Just the probability. So not if it will have so 50% chance that this will occur. He, he can tell, I can tell you if this particle, if this particle will bounce, this proton of this electron will bounce or will go through our skin or will bounce out from it with, uh, with uh, a simple probability uh, uh, system. So this is just very, very short because it's, it's super funny how he does it. So how primitive and simple this idea is. So here the task is to say, will a photon uh, bounce in it or it will go through the, through the material, which is basically what, what happens. Huh? The, 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 the rays of light are hitting, therefore we can get the sense of the texture. There's a moment of transparency, a mirror, reflects back, bounces back almost all the light that, that it receives, our bodies not, and so on. So this is interesting because this is just how he, he puts it here with a very nice diagram. Page. How to calculate the correct probability that light will be reflected from glass of a given thickness? Because that's the only thing that physicists know how to do. What, what, we, what we do 
to get the answer to this problem is analogous to the things we have to do to get the answer to every other problem explained by quantum electrodynamics. So he's, he shoots, he shoots a, 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 a photon of light. He has a watch, a stopwatch. The watch starts turning. And the moment that the light, light bounces back, the stopwatch is, stops. And by this simple act, he knows which proto, I mean the, the probability of a proton to, 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 to get bounce to bounce or not. I think this is this is interesting because these are the mathematics that are driven Google and and uh, and uh, really our, our quantum our quantum world. So do you know <laughs> to get <the> line? <clears throat> So this is this is this is this is super interesting because then you have you have uh, we all know the web, right? So uh, page rank. So and Markov, no, but what is what is what is and and so this is about measuring the uncertainty, huh? So I'm gonna start from from the from the from the end. So. By these mathematics and by this way to understanding the probability of something to happen, events like Brexit and and this the, uh, Brexit and the election of Trump, this is what is behind of that. So this is kind of a reverse engineering story. Why 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 is so? Because even if you are not if we are not on Facebook, we are part of Facebook. Even if you don't have a profile of Facebook, we are part of it. Because Facebook is so big and has collected so many data of us and has profiled all of us that created the category, they're, they are profiling us. So the moment that you that I get into this profile, I know exactly where I belong in this whole world. So I exactly get my friends, I exactly get my neighbors, I exactly get they get people who they get the actions that I like. The people I talk to, what kind of objects I, 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 I own. So even me, without, without me being there, the moment that I put a step on it, I'm totally uh, uh, profiled. And how this happens is by mark of by mark of change, probabilities, by all these techniques of the same techniques that are uh, uh, measuring the probability of electron to bounce so if, it, if this if this makes i don't know if this makes uh, sense let's you know uh, we can we can look at, at brexit with, because that's exactly how they did it so with brexit they targeted they found people who were not there so there there's there was always this dispute between the right between the left and then they know they knew that they had to gain certain certain uh, certain people to vote for them, but with these techniques, Cummings, what he did is he found people who were not there. He found people who were not there, and not only that, but he told them what they wanted to hear. So they they made something out of of nothing and exactly it's, it's exactly by observing and by measuring the probability of something to happen let's watch the the trailer of of this movie do you know this movie do you know what happened yeah, in, in brexit huh? right but not everyone knows Look at how. It. we are about to ask the biggest question in a generation in or out and we need a leader We need to understand who our voters are. Appeal to their hearts. People are feeling angrier, ignored. Is it immigration? You can be honest. Is it race? Which countries don't you like? New people come in. We get squeezed out. We want to return to a time when we knew our place, when things made sense. Fictional or not. How to change the course of history. We have to hack the political system. Hack it. I'm talking about altering the matrix of politics. Social media platforms are designed to find like-minded people. Our software will locate and target people that no campaign has ever targeted before. People who don't and have never voted. Three million extra votes that the other side have no idea exist. 
this is an insurgence against the establishment. We're going to build something that will restock the odds in our favor. What are your expectations, realistically? To create the biggest political upset since the fall of the Berlin Wall. This, this is this is a, uh, this is very dramatized for the movie, but then you can watch you can watch him explaining this this uh, event. How, how to do it. Each of these elements, which the which the um, which the a little bit of detail because it's um, perhaps of interest regarding this election is um, uh, we did a new kind of polling. So I'm sure all of you know the polling methodology used. So here uh, in, the, in this in this uh, keynote, he's he's saying I did exactly what Facebook did. I use exact same categories that Facebook Facebook uses to look at the whole population, even those who are not there. So then, this 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 is this is a very relevant and radical way to communicate with people, and this could not have happened, I think, without the without the the Google in in, in our in our understanding, because the the web as we know it today started ninety eight with the page rank algorithm. So before the before PageRank, before Google, there was an internet. There were web pages, but all the indexes were manually manually uh, updated. So there were really people going to blogs and talking to people and asking, "What is cool now? What is good? Do you want to talk about food? What kind of blogs about food do you have? What kind of websites are popping up and so on?" And of course, if everybody can put a web a web page from anywhere and be online and be accessible from 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 all around the world. This is a task. This is a non-human task to look at everything and categorize something and categorize it all. And what's, what's, what's so beautiful, for instance, when we had now this uh, the double slit experiment, huh? So when when the, the things are behaving like a wave or a particle and so on, depending on on how you look, that's one thing. But then when it goes through, it says it goes through one and the other, both and none. But how do you measure it? You measure it always in terms of probabilities. So you don't work with fixed understanding of things. It's not zero or one, it's 20% or 30%, or it's 30%, it's like this, and 70%, it's like that. So also these guys, they always work in probability. So nothing is 100% sure. It's sure enough. It's good enough. It works. It's not perfectly, but it works. And just with this understanding that it doesn't have to be 100%, everything kind of works in, in crazy, unimaginable way. Huh? So it's working with probabilities. These are the probabilistic alphabets, probabilistic characters, and so on. We will work with this a lot. The probabilities, this is the, the, the probability space that search engines like PageRank work with. So because now what, what happens? So if all these observations cannot be humanly maintained, so then you have machines who are constantly looking and creating probabilities of you liking something, of you clicking on a website. So this is the algorithm page rank. The probability distribution that you will click on bbc.co.uk. And just as, as is the same mathematics as, as, uh, as uh, Markov, is the same mathematics as uh, uh, they describe the quantum world. Is the same mathematics. Is the same applications that made these disruptive social uh, elections and 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 so on. And this is interesting to see that these are mathematics from 1906. Markov chain. The, the a Markov chain, there are two states, A and B. What's the probability of B going back to B or B moving to A? 80 and 20. What's the probability of A moving to A or, or going to B? 60 and 40. That's it. You have all the websites, you have all the people online, you create networks, you calculate this probability. Whenever someone new comes, it's already part of the probability. And this, this is all 1906, 1908, implemented with Google and exploited or, or radicalized with, with Cummings, who has no moral compass. 
He has no motivation. He just did it because he can do it and he wanted to disturb things. Another thing, huh? the, the fantastic thing with this Cummings is that what he's doing is cutting the edge. It's extremely interesting, extremely smart how he's doing. So it's really fantastic. But the, the problem is there is no moral, there is no understanding of how to behave in a society, what are the consequences of this act? So for him, it's really. Uh, uh, he's a mercenary, so if he gets paid, he will do it. It's the question of the price, and it's the question of I did it, I'm cool, I can do it. Yeah? So it's just celebration of, of a certain ego. And then with these technologies, it's just crazy. So this is the problem. It's not technology, but how you use them, what do you think about them? Yeah? And you cannot, you, you, you need to, and there's no discussion about this. You know, he came with this idea and this idea was so radical that nobody knew what is this about. Nobody knows about the consequence, knew about the consequences. So it's just like the invention of some technique that is going to disturb everything. And then now, you, now, you know, all these privacy laws in the European Union changed after this with these privacy, privacy checks and, and so on, because there was no vocabulary. There's no understanding. It was disruptive as hell. And it's a very simple, a very simple thing. But then something that, that becomes very interesting as well is that, okay, if in principle, everybody is on Facebook and in principle, we are looking at many events and everything's talking to each other all the time. So this creates, this creates for us a kind of an abundant source of data of information. So just like the myth of cornucopia. So it's this endless, thing that just comes and comes and we can and, and their probability for us to find in something interesting something interesting to take it and then you to eat it to try it, to put it together so just 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 like this this abundance source of information it is this cornucopia the latin uh horn and copia abundance so the horn of the plenty this is how we see our world so we we see it as something rich beautiful to look at and vivid and alive and that we are able to engage with it, observe many things and then you just take them. And then if we go to, to the uh, uh, etymology, I mean, it's, it's for me, it's super interesting. This, this, this is the copia, the copia. So copia is an abundance. And, and I, I would say that we will say that the previous understanding of copia has a lot of, of has a lot of, of, uh, pre-assumptions that to copy is very doubtful. So when, when China makes a BMW, just a car that just looks like an X5, and then what, the, what, what uh, Europe says, they are copying our cars, they are copying our design. So this is not acceptable. And of course they go and they fight and of course they lose. Yeah? So then these, these cars are there. So they're just, it's, it's just copying. We have a Free assumption that copying is not that good, but in this setup, copying, we we had, we turn it and then we say it, copy is the source of a, it's a it's a source of beautiful abundance. To this, nothing comes out of nothing, so we always start from the from the plenty. Yeah, yeah with the copious, with the plentiful, with the copia, with the uh, and so on. So. Again, if we and and then and then if we go back we, with uh, to our philosophical hero Michel Serre, he has this beautiful book, Variations of the on the Body. And in this book, what's the page? So one of the things that I found super interesting about copia and abundance and information is that he relates this act of copying directly to knowledge. So he says, how, how does a body knows to do something? How does the, the, the face of a baby knows how to, how, what kind of muscles, what kind of expressions, with which expressions to, to talk to, to, to the parents or to, to the people around? Just by copying, by copying the sounds, by copying the, 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 the expressions, how, how do you learn to, to swim? Just you look at someone swimming and then you kind of start doing it. So before even any, before rationalizing what's going on, he says, 
he says, what happens is you are confronted with something and then you copy it and then you copy it until you have it. And then the moment that you are free from this, this, uh, 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 this initial act that you are trying to learn, you learn to do this, you are free from it, and then you go somewhere else. And then this is what is described, uh, what, what he described as uh, invention, imitation as origin of knowledge. So this is this is this is insane. I mean, this is uh, for us. This is very beautiful and very capacious and very very inspiring. Our knowledge arises from others who learn from who learn it from ours, which by teaching it, it does remembers it and exposing it augments it in in infinite cycles of positive growth, which nonetheless are sometimes blocked by the stupidity of obedience. So knowledge comes from copying things, learning to do something, then you go somewhere else, you exercise and probably something with a certain uh, uh, degree of novelty comes to, comes to life. But then I, 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 how are we on time? Then with the, so then, yes, yes. Uh, like what, what, what I think is striking and what we are also aiming here at in the way how Jorge was talking. So we go from, for instance, from the double slip experiment and, and this Feynman and these things, then we go to Brexit and then from Brexit, we are going to cornucopia. So directly to a kind of a mythical setting. But then what, what's so interesting with this Marco is that he was doing these probabilities of letters. So what he did, he used an epos, a Daniel Nagin, so which is literature, which is again comes from the humanities. And then he was just checking which letter is coming after which letter. And he was measuring this. Huh? And then he said, okay, if we have a Daniel Nagin like this, and this is the last letter we have, the next letter most probably is going to be this one. Huh? But the funny thing is that it's super abstract mathematics. Yeah, which is being calculated on a humanities thing. So it's always kind of mixed one with the another. So the, 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 the basics of this Google algorithm is coming from an epos. That's a beautiful link. And this Sarah guy, he's always making these beautiful links. Huh? Just this, mm -hmm. this one. Yeah, yeah. Thing. But then if we, if we some kind of agree with, uh, with that copying is part of, of that, the question of origins is not relevant because in this set of the origin is the cornucopia, the origin is the thing itself. So then what's an interesting question here, we will say, and, and uh, me already mentioned with the example of BMW that who, who has the authority over a piece of work, the authorship and ownership. And then this is a very contemporary example with the NFTs that this is directly linked. This is, this is what we value nowadays the most because we are talking about something that is copied everywhere, a GIF. And we are not interested of on, on, in the copy. We're interested in who is the author of this. We we want to know who is the author of something that is everywhere. So we don't want to we don't want to know where is the origin where is the origin of this. We want to know who owns it. Who has the authority over the piece of? Oh. Herzlich willkommen. Mein Name ist Jürgen Schmidt und Sie kennen mich vielleicht von einem meiner Börsenbriefe. This is Nian Cat. He's part cat, part pop tart. The gif of a rainbow casting feline was a viral meme back in 2011. Fast forward to February 2021, the original gif was sold at an online auction for 300 Ether, the cryptocurrency that powers the Ethereum network. That was equivalent to nearly $600,000 at the time. You may be asking how someone can own the original copy of a gif that was pervasive around the internet. It's because it was sold as an NFT or non-fungible token which acts like a digital certificate of authenticity. The market for NFTs ballooned in 2020, climbing to a market cap of at least 338 million from about 41. Very funny, who owns the original copy? 
this this is exactly this, this game huh? this it's the, the 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 original is within the copy and the copy is part of the original so this is not so this is our our, our state of the world so what's then what do we need to ask for who who is the author of something and these are projects huh? so this you will be the author of a project that is put together by thousands of quotations by thousands of movies that someone else did and you and they will be part of them it will be part of you but you will have the face and you will be the author of this so this kind of with this with this kind of of of, uh, of uh, metaphors this is your nft in a way you need to it needs identifiable it will be everywhere what is your voice is your position and and what 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 this if we push this idea where it leads us it's again with the branding because the branding is a way of authorship that has a face and has a position in the world the the example of the bmw but i want to put uh, here on the table another example from from mad men a tv series and the the hilltop hilltop coke ad so uh I don't know if you guys know this TV series, Mad Men. It was very popular, a seven years long TV series about Madison Avenue uh, advertisement company. And over seven years, you see a character that is uh, making a th that is uh, in the that gets into the advertising and it starts with two people, then five people, then he has a uh, 20 breakdowns, and then he comes back, and then he's all about telling people what they want to, he's been paid to brand things. And now this is, and this is interesting, this is the, the end of, of the, the series, the end of all the, the, the whole series, and he's at the top. So he's, a, he's the biggest brander person who is doing brand at man in New York in the 70s. So just, just to, to, to put another example about branding and Coca-Cola. Where are we? I should be here. Uh, this one. So this is the guy, and then he went. This is the, the end of everything. And he went on a trip. He doesn't know what to do with Coca Cola. It's the biggest thing. He's at the peak of them. What what's going on? And he gets lost. Now thankful for the sweetness of the earth. The new day brings new hope. Lives we've led. The lives we've yet to lead. New day. New ideas. A new you. like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves i like to teach the world to sing sing with me Who's the author of Coca-Cola? Who is Coca-Cola? Is this guy? You, you, you can, because this is based on a character of, of, of uh, that existed, huh? an iconic character. What, what, what Coca-Cola would be? This was the most iconic uh, act of Coca-Cola in the 70s. 
and they nail it. I mean, someone nails it, nailed it. The advertisement company, the branding company. So it has this beyond the life of Coca-Cola is beyond the liquid itself. And there's a face, there's a brand. This is what, what we find interesting. And this again, this is you branding Anthony Bourdain. I think I can stop here. What maybe? Uh, so, so you're very, very just then a few examples. Huh? So examples around around branding, around people who we find interesting because we think that they think like we find interest in how they think and how they do things. We call this engendering, huh? this looking, articulating everything by articulating something by looking at everything, branding, giving it and giving it a face, giving it a, a voice. So an example that I love with Wes Anderson and Yuma Malouf, Spit Mouse Mommy, uh, an exhibition in, in, uh, in uh, Indiana in the Cons History Museum, where I, I will let the curator to tell the story. But it's, it's about this, eh? it's just now these two, three examples are about people who we find interesting because they are doing things in, the way, in a way that resonates with us. So this is, you all know, mummy. you know Wes Anderson, I hope, yes? Film director. In a coffin and other treasures is an exhibition okay. of objects from the collections of the Kunsthistorisches Museum, which have been selected and curated into a fascinating display by Wes Anderson and Juman Malouf. It's the third in a series of exhibitions that we've done for which interesting creative individuals are invited to spend an extended period of time engaging with the museum and its collections to make a personal selection to present to our public. This exhibition is unusual. It presents more than 300 objects that we have never seen before, that have never been publicly shown. And also the manner in which the objects are presented is something entirely new for us. Wes Anderson and Juman Malouf arranged a new collection of paintings on both ends of this room. Especially portraits caught their attention, but not only. Here you see, for example, the portraits of the so-called hairy people. Due to a genetic peculiarity, Petrus Gonsalvus and his children were covered with hair on their whole body and face. The phenomenon met with great interest and corresponded entirely with the spirit of the 16th century. A magical room, green in all shades, brings it to iridescence and shine. In the middle of the large display case, you'll find one of the most extraordinary objects of this exhibition, the famous emerald vase from the Imperial Treasury, the largest processed emerald in the world. This vessel is never lent and has been one of the highlights of the treasury for centuries. It feels like the purest green you can imagine, as if it was the ink pot with which all the other green objects in the display were painted. When you write to a curator who's been at university for seven years and you say to them, do you have something green? You could almost hear them suppressing a laugh sometimes or suppressing a groan because this is everything that they have never been taught to do as a curator. Funny, huh? Is it there are so many how, how the curator described this event. I've never seen this. We have in the basement. I would never, we have never seen these things. So again, I, with this footage, with and then with with the footage, with the observation of many things, and these guys, they put together something that is part of their brand. If you look, if you remember any of the movies of of Wes Anderson, this directly resonates with it. Huh? And all Wes Anderson with these colors always. And with these strange characters and the way that that they curated the space, there's there's uh, there's not even tag name on these things. So can you imagine having having a a piece a, a, a piece of rock and a Renaissance painting next to each other with no direct link? But then you look at it and then you say, yeah, this is this makes sense somehow. And what's what's so fantastic is that you. you... You think these are kind of uh, contemporary examples, but you go here to the winter camera and check 
in the castle there, it's the same kind of setting. Huh? So the way how you organize objects is not according to a specific time or this or that. It's really like <clears throat> according to a material, according to my fetish, according to this, according to that. And you are telling stories about the world. <clears throat> so the Wonder Camera is so close to this mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. and very distant in a way from a museum, mm -hmm. although they are related closely as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but about them taking what they think will help them to tell the story to say we are Bess and you mom. Uh, so then I'll job this uh, when Joe Young Wilson, you I, I already mentioned this is the same guy who is doing all this crazy footage. And uh, someone who I, we find also interesting uh, to a certain extent is Adam Curtis, uh, because he has also this incredible footage of BBC of, of decades. And then he makes very interesting documentaries. And, and uh, he, he's kind of a standard of, of documentary, I would say, with, with uh, Werner Herzog probably and, and so on. Just to, to, to check another example, not pay attention to the relationship the relationship the relationship between 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 We are living through strange days. Across Britain, Europe and America, societies have become split and polarized, not just in politics, but across the whole culture. There is anger at the inequality and the ever-growing corruption, and a widespread distrust of the elites. Yet at the same time, there is a paralysis, a sense that no one knows how to escape from this. Even in America, where there is now hope with the new president, there are also fears that despite the growing crisis, the system will just return to normal. This paralysis is also fueled by a technology driven by the aim of giving you today another version of what you had yesterday, and never a different tomorrow. These films are a history of how we got to this place and why both those in power and we find it so difficult to move on. So in, in, terms, of, in terms of this relationship between the image and the text, this is interesting huh? because it, there's footage again, because the resources are, are very, very, uh, very big and his ideas are very sharp. But when I think I would suggest us to stop looking at this as an example is uh, 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 the moment that it, this becomes pure journalism, because this is journalism. He says, I am a journalist. And then he says, what we journalists are good at is to find out and to pe pe tell people what they think, wh what they feel and what they think. So uh, in, in, in all these things that we're discussing, this is kind of a little bit outdated. So it's not a matter of, of telling you what you think or telling the society what they think. And this is when, when this kind of work gets a tone, a color that we don't find that interesting. So we, this is interesting, not in a journalist moment, but as a, as a, as a piece of, of, of work that works with, contemporary, with the contemporary condition of the world as we are trying to, 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 to push. <clears throat> in terms of, of architecture, I think maybe we can take these examples in the next weeks, but uh, we see also this in, for example, the work of, of, of Jati with the book Non-Referential Architecture, which is directly, he's directly saying, this is 
also a condition that architects should be dealing with. And Rem Colhas as well, he talks a little bit about it, but I think we can, uh, uh, we will have time to, to go to architecture. I think let's not go to architecture. Let's stay like, I mean, I would, let's stay like this. But uh, we see this as well in, in, in architectural terms and architectural discourses, because we are in, now we are talking about mathematics, quantum physics, uh, the state of the world, but we care about spaces huh? so don't 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 forget this as well so i am trained architect and i care about articulating interesting things as well not only video not only not only images but whatever this may be so let's not go to architecture from my side now and yeah we can discuss the parasite as well and alienation and all this kind of stuff i think we can we have time for for this <laughs>